Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuation here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 6 from the Jan 2011 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. Now before we get into the question, just a bit of a disclaimer. The topic that was tested here was incomplete records. Now, as of the recording of this video, that topic is not on the current CSEC PUA syllabus. However, there are students who do other syllabuses who watch my videos who still have to do incomplete records. So I'm doing this video for them. And also, if at some point in time in the future, CSEC decides to bring back incomplete records, well, then this video would be relevant then. And also, I didn't like the idea of doing solutions for questions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 7, and leaving all 6. I'm a bit OCD that way. Anyhow, guys, without further ado, let's get into the question. Okay, so it reads that Jay Collins, owner and operator of Collins Smart Mart, lost all her stock in a fire on the evening of March 31st, 2010. Whoops. She also lost most of her records in the fire, but was able to piece together the following information. So we have some information down here. What are they telling us? Amount owing to suppliers at Jan 1, 2010, 500. So that's the opening balance for creditors. Payments by check made to suppliers, 36,725. Amount owing to suppliers at the end of March, 1,420. Okay. Cash purchases for February, 2,700. Cash from sales deposited at bank between Jan and March, 31st, 2010, 82,000. And closing inventory as at December 31st, 2009. So that's last year's closing stock, which would be this year's opening stock, 85,000. Now, what's the first thing they want us to do? They want us to prepare the creditor's total account or the creditor's control account to calculate the amount of credit purchases for the period. Okay, so we're going to open our creditor's control account and we are going to start with the opening balance that they gave us here of $500. And of course, creditors is a liability and liabilities have credit balances at start. The next item I'm seeing is the payments by check made to suppliers, $36,725. That's going to go on the debit side because when we pay back our suppliers, we reduce the amount of money that we owe them, thereby decreasing the liability. And to record a decrease in a liability, you need to debit the liability account. Okay, the next thing they have is the amount owing to suppliers on the 31st of March 2010 of 1,420. Now that's going to be brought down on the credit side, 1,420, because creditors is a liability, and they have credit balances brought down. But before you can be brought down on the credit side, you have to be carried down from the debit side. Now, what's missing is the credit purchases. That's what the question is asking us to find. So this little makeshift or summarized control account is what's gonna help us find that. How? Well, we're gonna add up the items on the debit side and subtract the loan item on the credit side, and that's gonna give us total credit purchases. And of course, if we add both columns, we'll get the same total of 38,145. Right, and that's how you find the well total credit purchases for the period, right? Or oh, this should really say um 31st March. Okay, all right, that's it for part one. Let's take a look at part two. So they are asking us to calculate the total purchases figure for Collins Smart Mart for the period Jan 1st to March 31st, 2010. Show all we can clearly. Two marks. Okay, that's not gonna take much, right? So to calculate purchases for that period, we're simply going to have to add credit purchases and cash purchases. The credit purchases figure we just found in the control account was 37,645. And the information up here tells us that cash purchase for February was $2,700, right? Now that's the only information we have about cash purchases. So we have to, we have to assume that that's the only information about cash purchases, that there were no, there was no other cash purchases. When we add those two figures, we get 40,345. And that's it for that part of the question. Let's take a look at part three. Okay, so it says, given that Jay Collins, Collins sorry, normally operates at a gross profit margin of 20%, find the cost of sales for this period. Show you with it. Okay, interesting. So ratios, this is, this is really where the ratios were used at the CSEC level to, fa to, to facilitate incomplete records questions. So gross profit margin is gross profit as a percentage of sales. So what they're saying here, if the gross profit margin is 20%, the gross profit in dollars is simply 20% of the sales figure. What is the sales figure? Well, the question told us that the sales figure is $82,000. So to calculate cost of sales, we're going to take the sales figure of $82,000. Now, normally we'd say sales minus cost of sales is gross profit. So if you swap gross profit and cost of sales, right, you're going to simply 
rearrange the equation to, to make cost of sales the subject. In other words, instead of saying sales less cost of sales is gross profit, you can say sales less gross profit is cost of sales. Now, how did I get this gross profit again? Remember, the question said that the gross profit margin was 20%. That means 20% of this figure is the gross profit. And when we subtract, we'll simply get the cost of goods sold or cost of sales. Now, if gross profit is 20% of sales, it means cost of goods sold is 80%. So if you have your calculators out, you could always double check. Find 80% of this and you'll get your cost of sales. Okay, there's one more part of this question. Sorry, there, there are two more parts. Let's check them out. Okay, so this was an interesting piece. Prepare the income statement, trading account section for Collins Smart Mart for the period ended March 31st, 2010. Show clearly the value of inventory, closing stock, lost in the file. So this is where also was an, as an application of income records to help us figure out missing figures for closing stock. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going we're gonna to do up a trading account and we're going to kind of have to work backwards to get that closing stock figure. Let's check it out. Okay, so don't forget to head up properly, Colin Smart Mart income statement for the period ended March 31st, 2010. The first item is the sales of 82,000, and then we're going to less cost of goods sold. So the opening stock given to us in the question, where was that opening stock? Oh, that was right, the 85,000, right? Because it told us it was December 31st, 2009, which is the end of 2009, and we are working for Jan 1st, 2010 to March 31st, 2010. So last year's closing stock is this year's opening stock. We're going to put that there. The purchases figure we calculated two, two pieces ago, that was 40345 Adding those two things together gives us the cost of goods available for sale. Now, normally we would subtract closing stock, but we don't have it. But we do, however, have gross profit and cost of sales because we worked that out in the previous part of the question. We found gross profit as 20% of the sales figure because that's what the margin was. They told us the gross profit margin, right, is 20%. That means gross profit is 20% of sales. We worked backwards and we got the cost of goods sold figure by taking sales and subtracting gross profit. Now, normally we subtract closing stock to get from here, cost of goods available, to here, cost of goods sold. So just like I was saying in the previous part, instead of taking sales and minus in cost of goods sold to get gross profit, we could switch around these two and change the equation. We could say sales minus gross profit is cost of goods sold. The same thing happens here. If cost of goods available minus closing stock gives you cost of goods sold, then cost of goods available minus cost of goods sold will give you the closing stock figure. And you could always use your calculator to double check that. Okay, there's just one more part of this question. Let's check it out quickly and call it a day. Okay, so part B <laughs> says state the name given to the relationship between gross profit and cost of sales. Okay, so if you don't know, we talked about gross profit, mar gross profit and sales. That was gross margin. So the relationship between gross profit and cost of sales is called the markup. And that's about it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question 6 from the Jan 2011 PUA Paper 2. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful PUA handouts. Anyway guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.